Hello everyone, Gilly here. Let's continue solving the advent of code problems. This is day three. I'm gonna be doing the solution in F-sharp, of course. This is part one of day three. So part one is there's this spiral number grid where you start at the center and you work your way out spiraling in a circle like this. So we just keep going round and around and around. And basically what the problem is looking for is it wants to know from a particular input value where that value is compared to this origin point, compared to one, which it's calling, it's calling that slot zero, zero. And it's looking for this thing called the Manhattan distance, which if you're not familiar with it, it's just a really simple distance. It's kind of a very clear, like if you had a grid, it looked like this and you wanted to know the distance between these two, it's as far as it takes to go over and up. It's not as clever as like going in a straight line or like following streets. It's really just over and up or up and over or however you want to compute it, it's the same thing. Manhattan distance is a funny name for things because when I look at it, I always get a little afraid because it sounds scary, but it's not. It's just that simple. It's actually one of the simplest distances to calculate. I'm going to guess it would be called the Manhattan distance because of the grid-like structure of Manhattan streets where everything's kind of a grid. So to get places, you do go across squares, across blocks of road. The puzzle input for the for part one is this value right here. So we'll need that. And let's get to solving it. Basically, it just wants to know how far away, according to Manhattan distance, that input is. So let's saw it. I'm going to call it SOT, which I just think should mean the thing we're looking for, basically. Um, let's see. Algorithmically, what I want to do is I want to have a walker kind of structure, which is going to talk about things like which way the walker is facing. So if you were working outside, if you were building up the spiral and you were on two, you should be facing this way, facing upward, and you're at position horizontal one, vertical zero. A lot of people will use X and Y. I find it's kind of confusing, especially when you're thinking about like arrays of arrays. Although this problem, I won't solve it with arrays of arrays, but I'm actually gonna use the terminology horizontal and vertical. So this is zero, zero, horizontal zero, vertical zero. This would be horizontal one, vertical zero. This would be one, one. Um, this would be negative one, negative one if that makes sense. So that's kind of the overall algorithm I want to do. So let's go and let's start from the high level and let's make a function which given a walker like that, I'll just call it S for state. Given a walker, we're going to look where the walker is at and I'm going to be coding this very top down. So I'm doing the algorithmic stuff first and then filling in the details later, which is not actually normally how I code, but it's going to work out well for this. So we want to know where the walker is at and basically, if it's on a turning corner, well, what we need to do is a couple of things. We need to turn, and then we need to move forward. So I'm making the distinction that there's a thing called a turning corner here, because that's really the only thing that's special about any point in the grid. If you're at 14, for instance, you should be facing to the left this way and you don't really want to do anything, you just want to go forward. So most of the time you're just going forward, but once you get to 17 here, if you are thinking of it as being something that's built up like this, once you get to 17, then you need to turn and then start going downward. So this is just brute force building up from scratch. There's a special case on the bottom right. This is a little bit weird because this corner looks a lot like this corner, but there's a special reason that this corner has a special rule where we need to actually go one beyond the corner in order to turn. So I'm calling that a turning corner too. So if there's a turning corner, we need to turn and then step forward. If there's a non-turning corner, um, let's call it a non-turn, then what do we do? We just go forward. We just keep walking forward in the direction we're at. So you can imagine kind of a little, um, almost like a chess piece, like, um, like a king on a chess board, except um, you can't hop diagonals. You can just go up, down, left, right. So let's start filling some of these things in. Well, it would be nice to see what this S looks like and what I mean by at. So let's start filling that in. Um, type state, it's going to have an at. I'm just going to use a record here. And that at is going to be a position. And it's going to have a way that it's facing. And we're going to need to track that so that we know what forward means, which way forward is actually going. Um, and facing is just going to be a direction. I'll call it a direction. Maybe an orientation would be a good word too, I'm not exactly sure. Type direction. 
Um, I'm going to use terminology left, right, up, down. And for position, I'm going to say horizontal. And that's just an int. And then I'm going to say vertical. And that is also an int. I like horizontal and vertical because it's a nice analogy. X and Y is a little more mathematical and I find can be confusing at times, even for myself. And I consider myself to be a little more mathematically oriented, so that's no good. So we need a function turn now, which given a state will turn that state. So that shouldn't be too hard, let's give it a go. Let turn state equal. What do we need to do? Well, we need a new state, so we can say s with but we need a new at on that state, essentially. So what is the new at gonna be? Well, it depends on the old value of at. So match s dot at, or sorry, direction. When I said at, I mean direction. We're turning the direction. The at doesn't, isn't affected by turning. Turning is just, if you're standing still, it's the idea that if you're looking this way and you would have normally stepped that way, you're gonna pivot so that you would look this other way. So that as you're like, for instance, as you're going around, you know to turn when you get to the end of the thing you're filling in. <clears throat> At least that's the analogy I'm using for the solution. There are lots of ways to solve problems like this typically. So if we're facing up, what does that mean? That means we would be going this way, but since we're turning, we gotta turn towards the left. If we're going left, and you'll notice this will be kind of circular, um, we should be going down. So if we're going this way, we should turn to go down. The down turning will take us down rather. If we're going down, we should be facing right after we turn. And as you might be able to guess, if we're going right, after turning, we should be going up. So we're going right, but after turning, we should be going up. Okay, so that's that. Let's make sure, I'm gonna run this really quick. It looks like I broke something, so let's see. We got a couple of warnings because of bad indentation, and then I got a bad character. So line 16, I kind of just biffed that up, it looks like. So if we're going right, we should be going up. And then it doesn't like the indentation here, so let's just pull it over to a new line, indent that a little more, and see if it's happy now. Okay, if something else is not working, basically I call this direction, but direction is just the type. I actually named the record facing. Oh my goodness, wow, okay. So we have more errors, which is okay. Uppercase variable identity should generally used in patterns and may indicate, okay. So that's indicating that the things inside of the match, like the corners, the turning corners, and the non-turning corners are not there. And then forward is not defined. So let's start with forward, let's define that. And basically forward is also gonna take a state. Basically everything's gonna operate over this state type. And if we're, we're gonna look at which way we're facing, and we're gonna do a pattern match kind of like this, but we just gotta step forward in the appropriate direction. So to do that, we need s dot, uh, we need s with at equals, s dot at with. Now we just have to modify it so that the appropriate direction is taken. If we're going up, then we need s dot at dot vertical plus equals one, or is incremented by one. So that's that. If we're facing left and we want to move forward, well, that just means horizontal gets changed. So actually, you know, I forgot. This needs to be vertical equals. This needs to be horizontal. So if we're facing left, horizontal goes back one. So we're facing left, we're moving in this negative direction. All right, if we're moving down, down looks a lot like vertical, except we need to go negative. And if we're moving right, right looks a lot like left, except we need to go in the positive direction to go forward. Okay, so now we run it, we should just see that those patterns are failing or a warning actually, they'll still work. It's just gonna uninterestingly solve the problem. So yeah, we have some problems with rules and these names not existing down here. Basically what it's doing, what FRF is doing right here, is it's thinking that this is just a pattern variable, which of course means anything, right? This would match anything. So when you run this, it's gonna kind of spin around in circles, which is kind of funny in a way. Um, and this is never gonna be matched because this means anything, so it's always gonna match that. So F-sharp's actually helping us out here. This is why it's important to not ignore your warnings. Basically what I wanted to do here is I wanted to use an active pattern to kind of illustrate or to make these things a little more formal. So we're gonna be taking in actually just some kind of a position here. So I'm actually gonna destructure it right here. 
a little annoyed when my editor does that. It's strange. Um, and what we want to do is we want to match horizontal vertical. And there are a couple of things to note here. When we start out, we're at zero, zero. So this is kind of a special case. It's a weird value. If we don't handle it, it's going to break us later. I promise you. So if we're at zero, zero, we're going to do a non-turn. Actually, you know what? It might not really matter. I, I think it doesn't matter, but let's handle it anyways. So what's next? Well, if we get to a place where we find that the values are equal, I'm going to do this kind of in the order that I originally did it to illustrate how I went wrong. So if the absolute value of H is the absolute value of V, then that means we're at a corner. And not only is it a corner, it's a corner we care about, a turning corner, except, and this is where I went wrong, except in the case that you're down here, right? If you're here, where are you gonna be? Well, you're gonna be at horizontal one, vertical negative one. So this would be true. The absolute value is gonna make this true, but you don't actually wanna turn here. That would overwrite two. What you wanna do is you wanna move forward again. So let's handle that case. So if we get to a case where the H equals the negative V, so that would be like here, right? Where h equals negative v and v is less than zero. So that's just really ensuring you're at one of these um, diagonals down here. That's what that's ensuring. The, a, the v negative zero ensures you're down there. Well, then we're actually at a, a non-turn. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. There's one other special case here. The point is this is not a turning corner, but in the way I'm defining things, this is a turning corner. So we've got to actually turn there. So let's figure that out real quick. Basically, um, it's another case that's going to look kind of like this, except there is a little more to it. So if we're at negative V, if a negative H equals V minus one. So in other words, if we're out some ways this way and we're one beyond whatever the vertical is and V is negative still, well, then we're in a turning corner kind of situation. Otherwise, overall, there's no turn necessary. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, um, I'd recommend kind of reasoning through why. Basically, the idea is and when I first solved this, I did it wrong. I figured that this is a turning corner. I figured anything was a turning corner where the absolute value is equal, any of these guys, but really this isn't. So those two special cases are just to handle this weirdness of going around the spiral. All right, and now that we've kind of built out some helpers to, to solve this problem, let's go ahead and let's start to actually build the algorithm that's gonna solve it. So it's fun to build an initial state just to kind of clarify what you're expecting to happen here. And it kind of makes it flexible in some way too, where if you wanted to change where you're starting from, you could do that if you knew more information about later on. So horizontal is that, vertical is that. I don't know why it keeps doing this. This is weird. Facing, well, we're facing to the right initially. So you can imagine you're here and you're getting ready to jump to this two right here. Okay, so that's our initial value. Now, how I wanna solve this is I wanna build a function that's gonna be called element at n. And basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna get the nth element of the spiral, but it's gonna get the state that it builds up here. So we'll know which way it's facing, which doesn't actually matter to the solution. And we'll know where that value is, which does definitely matter to the solution. So what we wanna do is we wanna match n with if n is one, which we know n's not gonna be um, by default, but that's okay. What we wanna return back is we wanna return back the initial. We found it, it's the first one. So I'm gonna use a helper function for the other cases. That's why we know n won't be one here. And this helper function, I'm just gonna call it aux for auxiliary. I see this done every once in a while in ML style languages. And I'm gonna subtract one off of n, meaning we're going to the next one, pretty much. And you know what? Let's do a couple of things. Let's turn after we move the initial value forward. So this is kind of cool because we're starting to see sort of a domain specific language in these functions around moving. So we're gonna go forward one and then we're gonna turn. So you can imagine this really as being, we start here and we're facing this way over to the right. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna step forward one 
and we're going to turn. And that's going to set us up for the rest of the algorithm. Technically, not only is one kind of a special case in this whole thing, but this first value is if you're not turning the right way, you'll be in trouble because if you don't turn, you won't hit your first uh, corner and you'll just kind of keep going off infinitely into this direction, which isn't the right way to build the spiral. So let's define our aux. Our aux is gonna take in um, a couple of things. It's gonna take in the current n so we're just going to keep subtracting off of n until we find what we're looking for. And then it's going to take in the walker, which I'm going to call s, which I've been calling it for, for state, really. So what do we want to do? We want to match n again. And if n is 1, well, we found it, right? Well, we can return back s. We can return back our state. We found it. If there's any other thing, if, if it's any other thing, well, then we need to try again. So we can subtract one off of n, and we can step our state forward one step. So let's try it real quick for a smaller value to make sure the overall algorithm is right. Uh, let's try it for, let's see, it should be easy to see 13. Let's try it for, uh, let's try it for 14. It's a little more interesting, I would say. So if we run it for 14, we get horizontal one, vertical two, which looking at the problem, one, one, two. Awesome. So that's looking good. So let's try it for our actual input, which is named sot. Okay, and we get back negative 50 and 269, which isn't the actual distance value we're looking for, but calculating it is not too hard. So let's go ahead and really quickly calculate it. So let's store off the result. And then we can print the result in the form we're looking for. So we want the absolute value of r dot at dot horizontal plus the absolute value of r r dot at dot vertical. And that's all it takes to get the Manhattan distance. So we got 419, which if you plug it in, you'll find is the right answer. This was a really fun problem. It was a little bit more fun than the other ones, a little bit more challenging than the other ones. When I first looked at it, I actually tried to get way too mathematical on this, and I kind of just confused myself. My little programmer brain is not that good at math. So um, <laughs> I had fun solving it, and I kind of went through a bunch of different iterations, but this was the one that ended up kind of being the nicest. So I hope you enjoyed it.